two years ago in this very spot. We posed the question, can two people live full time out of a pop top truck camper? Well, two years later and 50,000 miles later, I'm going to answer that question. This lightweight pop-up camper is the four-wheel camper's Hawk flatbed. As you can see, it's mounted on a flatbed that is mounted to our Ford F-350 Super Duty. Now to quickly answer the question whether two people can live in this full time, the answer is yes. You don't have to watch the whole video. The answer is yes, we did it and we loved it. And in this video, I'm going to share the things we love about this camper and some of the drawbacks that we've found over the last couple of years. The reason we chose the four wheel campers Hawk flatbed is because it's low profile and lightweight. This is a lot lower than your standard hard sided truck camper. Plus it's only just over 1600 pounds dry. Now the other nice thing about it being a flatbed is you don't have the sides of the pickup bed coming out. So this has a much more open floor plan and you get about two feet more space in this than you do in a slide-in truck camper. We really like that open floor plan. Now we've taken this camper on a number of off-roading adventures and the lightweight and low profile have definitely come in handy on those adventures. Going back to that open floor plan, we find it very spacious. It works well for us and we've had a lot of friends over. At one time when we were on one of our off-roading adventures, we had six people in there for cocktails one evening we were all comfortable and we all had a place to sit. We also like the fact that the flatbed has a side entry because I've brought my motorcycle along on some of our adventures. That goes down in the back of the truck and we don't have to worry about a door at the rear opening and closing. One of the drawbacks of the flatbed is the camper actually sits much higher off the ground. So it's more difficult to get in and out of the camper than it is if you have a rear entry. Another benefit of the flatbed is it gives you a lot more storage. We had plenty of storage in there, more than enough for all of our things, and we never found that we needed more. Since we lived out of this full time, the indoor shower became a huge bonus for us. We weren't quite sure when we ordered it with that shower if we'd ever use it, but at certain times during the, our adventures in this camper, we were using that shower every other day. It was extremely handy. Now there's also an outdoor shower, which I used once and it was great, but I think the indoor shower was the way to go. Based on experiences we've had in other campers, when we designed this camper, we did it with 320 watts of solar on the roof and 300 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries. That was more than enough to run this camper off grid. When we were camping in full sun, we could go indefinitely without having to worry about driving the truck to charge up the batteries. We were running all of our electric appliances like the Instant Pot, my electric kettle, charging all of our devices, laptops, etc. And we had more than enough power to stay off grid. There are a lot of aftermarket upgrades that you can do to these things. One of which is we removed the old fantastic roof vents and put in max air roof vents, which really improved the airflow, but it also gave us nice rain covers. We also replaced the furnace and five gallon water heater that came with the camper with a Truma Vario furnace and the AquaGo tankless water heater. For us, that has made a big difference because both of those units are much more efficient and we could go longer in the cold when we were running our propane. There is a great community of four wheel camper owners out there and we enjoyed being part of that. They hold rallies, get togethers, off-road adventures, we made a lot of new friends through this community and that's been a big bonus for being a four wheel camper owner. Now in terms of living in this camper full time with another person, here are some things I really like. The bed is about the size of a residential queen size bed and we found the area very comfortable. It worked well for the two of us. We like the dinette being able to sit across from each other or turn it into a day lounge or even another bed. We enjoyed the space, the way the kitchen was laid out, where the fridge was, and even the toilet. The inside worked really well for us, but as we say, you don't live in one of these campers, you live out of them. So it was always nice to put the awning out, sit outside, enjoy that, or just enjoy the environment around you with all the windows open in the camper and getting some great airflow when you had the fans on. 
Now here are some of the downsides of the four-wheel camper. First of all, you're essentially living in a tent. With the canvas sides, when you're outside, you hear everything. Now, if you're out in a forest, that could be a good thing. If you're camping on a street or in a Walmart parking lot, you're gonna hear everything and it can get a bit noisy. Also, there's a limited amount of insulation in the camper. There are single pane windows and you have the canvas all around. We've camped down to negative 12 degrees and it's worked out well for us, but at the same time, you're running the heat a lot more. Now, the times we've been out in the desert in the middle of summer, it can get pretty hot. The other downside about the flatbed campers is they don't come with an option for AC. Some of the other four wheel campers do offer it, but not in the flatbed. Also, if you're camping someplace with a lot of humidity or in very cold, wet weather, you can get condensation inside the camper. Now, this is annoying. I wouldn't really call it a big problem, but every morning when we'd wake up, we'd take a towel and kind of wipe it down before we brought the uh, top down so we didn't get any mold or anything. Another downside of a pop-top camper like this one is that in bear country, there are restrictions as to where you can camp. When we went to Yellowstone, we found a few campgrounds we weren't allowed to stay at because we have a soft-sided camper, not a hard-sided camper. When we first got this camper, a lot of people were worried about our safety because it had soft sides. I don't think it's ever really been a concern, especially since the camper sits so high and it would be difficult for someone to climb in and basically cut through the canvas while we were in there. If it tells you anything about this camper and how much we loved it, this has been the longest we've spent in any one camper. We've really grown to appreciate all of its features and lightweight, low profile, all the things I mentioned in this video. If you want to see a full walkthrough, we'll link to it in this video and in the description below. If you want to read all the details about the updates we've made, all the features and options we picked on this camper, you can head over to our website at werethrussos.com and search for four-wheel campers. That's it for this video. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.